from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Lechacha, the basis of morality. If we look at Parshat Lechacha, we find amazing confrontation. You couldn't ask for a greater confrontation between two worldviews, uh, two typologies. We have confrontation between the king of Sodom and Avraham. And also Avraham is greeted by two characters, Malki Tzedek Melech Shalem, king of Jerusalem perhaps, and the king of Sodom. Again, there could be no greater contrast. Let's take a look at these confrontations and try to understand what they're all about. Firstly, there is sort of a misplacement. For we find by its, after the great victory, if you recall, the four Mesopotamian powers, including the Babylonian powers, uh, had made serfs out of the five local uh, Canaanite uh, uh, city-states. And uh, the city-states rebelled. There was a war. The north came and, and won. And Lot was taken captive. Avraham wanted to save his nephew. Basically, uh, he gets involved in the war, takes 318 soldiers, and he captures entire Israel for the very first time. With that, he captures a lot of people, saves a lot of people, people particularly from Sodom, and Lot among them. So, so the king of Sodom comes to greet him. Isn't that nice? That sounds very nice. It sounds like something Avraham might do, to go greet someone who's uh, of, of interest. We find in the Parshat Yitro, Moshe went out to greet Yitro. Yitro. It's a beautiful thing. It's a very hospitable thing to do. But then he's interrupted. King of Sodom is the one who went out to greet Avraham. But it's the Malki Tzedek, the king of Shalem, which Tehillim Ayin Vav 76, and also the rabbis say is the king of Jerusalem, uh, comes out first. And he says, uh, and he brings wine and bread. So we have a, gr- a first contrast right here. The king of Sodom comes out, but he ain't got nothing. He doesn't have any bread, he doesn't have any wine, he doesn't have any water. King of Shalem comes out with lechem and yain. He comes to greet him with bread and with wine. Perhaps the beginnings of the idea of Jerusalem as a center of sacrifices, libations of wine, the, uh, the, the t- 12 showbread on the table on the shulchan. Uh, perhaps an idea of, uh, it shows the, the idea of kahuna, of, of, of priesthood, of sacrifices, of the role of Jerusalem. So that's contrast number one. One comes out empty-handed, and the other comes out with gifts. Who lived among Sodom? Lot. Who were his children? Ammon and Moab. What was their sin? Why don't we marry people from Ammon and Moab? Because they didn't greet you with bread and even water. Malkitzedek greets us with bread and wine. But people live in Sodom, the children of Lot, they don't even greet us with bread and water. Lot, however, Lot is not so bad. Lot greets us when the angels come. He's going to greet them with bread and water. So he's good enough. Second contrast is, whereas Malki Tzedek says, wow, Baruch Avram, Lekel Yon, Konei Varans, blessed are you. One of the commentaries says, blessed are you, number one. It's unbelievable. You, 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 you risked your life for your nephew. You're no good nephew. And uh, number two, uh, God protected you. God, God, God saved you from your enemies. Amazing. So he's so grateful. He's... He's so appreciative to God. He's appreciative of Avram and everything he's done. And then we have the king of Sodom. King of Sodom, at first glance, didn't say anything. He comes to greet him, but what did he say? He didn't say anything. And now, some say cynically, to our more, others say cynically, after he sees it, that Avraham gives a tithing to the king of Sodom, then the tomb of the king of Jerusalem. So he says to himself, either one of two things. Uh-oh. He's giving a tithing. That means he thinks that everything belongs to him. <laughs> then I'm not going to get anything. So I better start negotiating. Version number two, Torah more. 
He says, he didn't know what to say. Avram is basically the king. I mean, Rosh says, that's it. Now Avram is king of the world. He won. So the king of Sodom, what is he going to do? He lost everything. Avraham owned, possesses everything that once belonged to the king of Sodom. What's he going to do? Ah, but then he sees that Avraham is a softy. He gives away stuff. So he says, oh, uh, why don't you give me something? Not one word of thanks, hello, nothing. Tell me, Nefesh. Give me the people back. You can keep the stuff. Probably an opening position. Probably was hoping to get the, the, the stuff as well. He knows Avraham. But he starts off, it's a deal. In other words, I know you, Avraham. I know you. You're in it for the, for the, for the money. So, tell you what, I'm keep the money. I want the people back. I want to be king of Sodom again. I want to have my constituency back. It's a deal. There's no great, there's no great uh, moral achievement by Avraham. It's a deal. The Midrash points out something else. That in this confrontation of the king of Sodom and Avraham, the king of Sodom could say to him, <laughs> Avraham, yeah, isn't that nice that you live such a moral life? You don't cheat anybody, steal from it. You're always giving away stuff. So generous. Yeah, that's great. And look who survived the war. Me. King of Sodom, the opposite. Not generous, not gracious, not kind, not giving. I survived too. Survival of the fittest. You don't need to be all, all the goodness and kindness that you have. It's a waste of your time. It's a waste of time. It doesn't get you anything. And get you, hey, look, I survived too. Another confrontation between these two figures. But the Rav Asaf Bednarsh of Yeshiva University in Israel, in the nice compendium of YU Torah in Mitocha uh, Ohel, he says, it's not a coincidence that the king of Sodom is so ungrateful and so immoral, and that Avraham the king of, and the king of Shalem, the Malkit Tzedek, so kind and so righteous and so appreciative. Comes from the environment. What is Sodom? In those days before the destruction, it was like the Garden of God. It was like Egypt. What's Egypt? <laughs> you take the Nile, it comes right up to your backyard, you make a little channel and you got uh, irrigation, no problem. You don't need to pray for rain. But Israel, it's a land which guys, God's eyes are always on it. Why? Because you always have to ask God, God, please, give me some more rain, give me something. Abraham told Lot to go north or south, to go in the, the spine of Israel, the, the center of Israel, the heartland of Israel, Judea, Samaria, and he went, no, he went to Jordan Valley. And there, it would be like the land of Egypt, he wouldn't be dependent on anyone. And says Rabbi Asaf ben Darsh, one who realizes he's dependent on the other, on God, for his very sustenance, will be more like inclined to be charitable to others who depend on his largesse. Because I understand what it is to depend on God, and I see how benevolent God is to me, I mo God models that, and I pay it forward, and I'm kind to others. However, Lot and his king, the king of Sodom, by contrast, who feels that he doesn't owe anything to anyone else, who has no gratitude uh, to others, he doesn't feel dependent on anyone, he doesn't see the world as a place where God is always giving you. He sees a place where you're entitled. Give me the, give, give me the people, he says to Avram. Not please, not thank you, just give it to me. Because he's entitled, because that's the way it is. Life is just, just always good. And somehow Jerusalem is really, if Israel is like that, then it makes people more appreciative, more dependent on God. Jerusalem is even more so. It's Matzdik, it's Yoshva. Everybody there was called Malki Tzedek, Adoni Tzedek, Yirat Tzedek. Anybody who lives there becomes righteous. It, it's, it's in the blood. The land of Israel, because of its precarious nature, the troubles are all around, the, the water problems, it makes Israel a place where people are more dependent, and it's that dependence on God that makes us hopefully more generous. We have here the confrontation of Jerusalem and Sodom. Righteousness and stinginess. Appreciation of God, 
lack of appreciation. Dependence on God, lack of dependence on God. A model, an understanding that God models kindness, a, a taking for granted everything that God gives you and feeling that you're entitled and no one else has to get anything. You're entitled to keep everything you've got. This is the beginning of the great confrontation between good and evil between uh, Jerusalem and Sodom. But actually, it's not a, just an external confrontation. Sometimes, as Isaiah says, Kisdom Hayinu, we become like Sodom. What's the solution, the antidote to becoming like Sodom, becoming like those wicked people? It's not just being nicer. What Isaiah suggests that we become a city of righteousness instead of being like Sodom, it's not just we start being nicer. We have to start with the underpinnings of morality, which are appreciation, understanding that we live in a world in which God is our Father and has provided for us to survive at whatever level. If I'm homeless, sleeping on the street, I'm still sleeping. Till as long as there's breath in me, I am in a world in which God has somehow provided for me at whatever level I live. Appreciation of that, that's what leads to a sense that that's what the world is, that's what parenthood is, that's what life is. It's a world in which there's giving, there's kindness, there's care, there's thanksgiving. And with that, hopefully, we, we take that model and we go pay it forward. That we give, we're generous, we care about others. That's the, what we learned here in this parsha, Parsha's Lechacha, we learned about the under, underpinnings of morality. Thank you for joining us here at the Anche Sfar Bethlehem's congregation for a discussion of the parsha. Join us each week for a discussion of the holidays and how to videos as well. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asb.org.